stop expecting defeat. We stop expecting failure. We're going to make mistakes and we're going to blow it at times. But Jesus redeemed us from having to live under the weight of this curse of failure, this curse of doubt, the curse of sickness, the curse of disease, the curse of poverty, the curse of family problems, the curse of mental disorders and the curse of emotional problems. These are all curses that Adam and Eve brought into this world through sin. But Jesus came to redeem us from it. Welcome to another episode of Think Like a Champion. Remember, this podcast is dedicated to helping you win in every way and enjoy every day. And for the last several weeks, we have been fasting from wrong thinking. Remember that? And how many of you have been doing that with us? And we're not fasting from food, but leading up to Holy Week, from Ash Wednesday to Easter, we have been fasting from wrong thinking. You know, so many people give something up as a form of sacrifice. But what we're interested in is transformation in our lives. We don't want to just give up a, uh, an item of food. There's nothing wrong with fasting from food at times. Obviously, there's great benefits to that. But what we really want is a change of thinking. We want to break the mentalities of failure, the mentalities that limit us. We want to uh, retrain our brains to think victoriously and to think optimistically and positively and full of faith and the, the power of God and the wisdom of God and the mind of Christ. Remember, God's not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love and a sound mind. If you haven't joined us in our fast from wrong thinking, which is the dismantling of the mindsets that defeat us, then go to fastfromwrongthinking.com, fastfromwrongthinking.com. You can sign up for free at any time and for 40 days we will permeate our thinking with God's way of thinking. We will permeate our limitations with the limitless power of believing all things are possible and that God is good and we are redeemed from curses, strongholds and limitations. In fact, today's episode of Think Like a Champion is all focused. I'm focusing because it's Holy Week and I want to encourage you to get to one of our services on Good Friday, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday is coming up. And we'd love to have you out at Life Changers. If you don't have a church home, if you're somewhere in the world that you don't have access to a really healthy church, come and join us worldwide through our global community, lifechangerschurch.com. And you'll find our services there. All right. And watch on any platform that you want. But um, today's episode, I'm really going to get into breaking these chains that are limiting us, uh, recognizing that we're redeemed from the curse of the law, the Bible says, and breaking through the strongholds, pulling down the strongholds and limitations that have held us back, that have hemmed us in, that have limited us. You know, the, as we celebrate Holy Week and what Jesus did on the cross, Many times when I was younger, I thought, oh, Jesus dying on the cross. I wish he wouldn't have had to do that. I wish it, it felt like a somber, sorrowful thing that Jesus had to suffer. And now we're, you know, I wish he didn't have to do that. But the truth is, is that I'm grateful that he did do that, because if it wasn't for his suffering, we would be cursed. If it wasn't for his suffering, we would not be able to be saved. We would not be able to be redeemed. We would not be able to break out of uh, the generational curses. And we've talked about that. And I've talked to you about the thoughts of that I feel cursed and limitations that we feel. And so many people think when bad things happen to them, they're still cursed. But I want you to see how free you really are. No matter what runs in your family, it's time to run over with what the new DNA, the new blood that you have. So what I want to do is I want to get into this verse in Galatians chapter three, verse 13, as we celebrate Holy Week. And I want to remind you that the Bible says Jesus Christ redeemed us in verse 13. He redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for cursed is one that hangs on a tree. So what I want you to see is that Jesus already redeemed us from the curse. So when I pray for you and when I lead you in prayer, I'm not breaking the curse off of you. I've I've heard preachers that have said, you know, uh, come receive uh, holy oil and 
I'll break the generational curse off of you or come and give a financial gift and I'll break the generational curse off of you. Well, listen, no man can break this generational curse. But Jesus broke this generational curse. You're not you don't break the curse. I don't break the curse. Jesus broke the curse by becoming a curse for us. It says that Jesus redeemed us here by becoming. See, when we understand that Jesus didn't suffer a little, he became sin for us so that we could become the righteousness of God. He became a curse. He became cursed because he hung on the tree so that we could be redeemed from that curse. And when we get a hold of this, it really sets us free. We stop limiting ourselves. We stop expecting defeat. We stop expecting failure. We're going to make mistakes and we're going to blow it at times. But Jesus redeemed us from having to live under the weight of this curse of failure, this curse of doubt, the curse of sickness, the curse of disease, the curse of poverty, the curse of family problems, the curse of mental disorders and the curse of emotional problems. These are all curses that Adam and Eve brought into this world through sin. But Jesus came to redeem us from it. And I want to go over these words because we need to know, know what this word means. Curse. We need to know what this word means. Redeem. And I want you to see that if you look at Galatians 313 and I want to break this word down for you and a little study of this word will really help you to understand what to expect in life, because the word curse, when it says here, Christ redeemed us from the curse, that word curse comes from a Greek word, katara, katara. And it literally is translated as what has to go down, what has to go down due to condemnation. So the word curse, it means what has to go down due to condemnation. In other words, the curse is taking you down because of condemnation. The curse is to always go down due to condemnation, to go down in your confidence, to go down in your faith, to go down in your health, to go down in your emotions, to go down in your relationships due to condemnation everything in life goes down. That's a curse. That's the curse. So when we think about this word, Christ redeemed us from the curse. What did he redeem us from? He didn't just redeem us from sickness and disease and he didn't just redeem us from sin. He didn't just redeem us from these emotional problems. He redeemed us from being forced to go down due to condemnation. He delivered us from defeat. He delivered us from going down. Now the Bible says we're going up. It's an upward call. The, the call of God is an upward call. God's calling us up. He's calling us further. He's calling us higher to go down means to fail, to go down. Everything's going down. Your finances are going down. Your opportunities are going down. Your relationships are going down. Your joy is going down. Your happiness is going down. Your health is going down. All of that is the curse. So if you could just see that the curse that Christ redeemed us from is, of course, he redeemed us from the curse of the law, the punishment of sin and death. He delivered us from that. He delivered us from the punishment that we deserve. He took the punishment and he delivered us from it. But if you could picture it this way, when life is going down all the time and getting worse and worse and worse, that's the curse. A life that's getting worse and worse. I've met people who have said, man, my life just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. What do I do? What do, how do I fix it? Well, you have to wake up and realize to wake up to the reality that you're redeemed from a life that's going down, 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 down and realize that God, through Jesus sacrifice on the cross, has created in you a new life that will go up and up and up and up rather than down, 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 down. So the curse is to go down. Everything has to go down due to condemnation. So to reverse that curse, Jesus suffers and dies, rises from the dead, gives us his righteousness so that now life can get better and better and better. The Bible says the path of the righteous, the path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter, better and better and better and better. Things go from glory to glory, from good to better, from better to great, from great to greater. That's how life is supposed to happen when you have Jesus in your life. It doesn't mean you're never going to have problems, 
but the trajectory of your life without him is going down, 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 eventually down to hell. <laughs> but, uh, the, but a life with Jesus, the trajectory of your life with Jesus is going up, 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 and eventually into heaven. Not that we're working our way down to hell or working our way up to heaven, but life is just going to keep getting higher and better and better and better and better until when you die, you go home to heaven. That's what it is to be redeemed from the curse, to re be redeemed. Christ redeemed us from the curse. So all these curses in the Bible, the curse of failure, the curse of the curse of sickness, the curse of uh, financial disaster, family disaster, tragedy, disaster. We're redeemed from this curse. We have to set our expectations now on going higher and higher and higher and life getting better and better and better. Now, we need to really redeem our, our we need to really re, um, renew our minds to this because so often we're expecting things to get worse. And when things start going good in our life, we somehow are trying to be cautious so that we don't jinx the good that we have in our lives. We don't want to mess it up. We, we always sometimes think, oh, um, man, things are going so good. They're bound to go bad at some point. See, that's cursed thinking. And Jesus redeemed us from the curse. So we have to start. We have to replace our our negative expectations with faith expectations, expecting things to get better and better and better. Why? Because, number one, the curse is already broken. It's already broken. We need to see that it's already broken. Declare. We need to declare it, that it's already say it out loud. Say the curse is broken. Jesus redeemed me. Say that Jesus redeemed me from the curse. I'm redeemed from going down and down and down. I'm redeemed. Say that out loud. I'm redeemed from a life having to go down due to condemnation. Now my life is going up due to the gift of righteousness. Now, what is the gift of righteousness? Jesus became sin so that we would become the righteousness of God. We don't have to walk around guilty all the time. We don't have to walk around in shame, in condemnation, beating ourselves up, letting other people beat us up, letting the devil beat us up. We have to break out of this mentality that we're cursed and we deserve punishment. And we have to replace that with Jesus became a curse so that I don't have to be cursed anymore. And he gave us his blessing. Jesus took our curse and gave us his blessing. He took our sin and gave us his righteousness. He took our sorrow and gave us his joy. He took our destination of hell and gave us his destination to heaven. So when the Bible says here in verse 13, Christ redeemed us, we know this is a account. It's an accounting term redeem. It's a it's a financial term or was used in a financial way. It means a payment has been made. A ransom has been paid that Jesus blood and his death on the cross is the ransom to buy you back from the slavery to the devil, slavery to sin, slavery to condemnation, slavery to shame. Jesus Christ has redeemed us from this slavery. He's redeemed us from this bondage. He has ransomed us. Let me give you another definition for this word to ransom us or to redeem us. It literally means to rescue us from loss, to rescue us from loss. What a powerful word. And it's Jesus Christ freeing us from the dominion of death and the dominion of the Mosaic law and the dominion of the curse that's attached to the Mo Moses's laws that God gave to Moses. If you don't obey every one of them, you're cursed. So it's impossible for anybody to escape this curse unless somebody steps up in front of us and becomes the curse for us and passes on the blessing to us, which is exactly what Jesus did on the cross. It's exactly why Jesus had to die on the cross, not just so that our sins could be forgiven, but that we could be delivered and redeemed from the curse. In other words, a life that has to go down, 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 down. We're delivered from that, redeemed from that. That curse is reversed and we now are going up and up and up and up and up. And Jesus frees us 
from the failures of our fallen condition. He redeemed even though we blow it and even though we make mistakes, he delivers us from the punishment of our sins. He delivers us from the punishment. Now, people may treat you differently because of your sins. If you there are some things you could do that are unlawful, that are illegal, that you could get thrown in jail. You haven't been redeemed from being thrown in jail if you break the law, but you've been redeemed from the ultimate eternal jail of hell. You've been redeemed from having to pay for breaking the commandments of God because we've all broken them, starting with Moses. He actually broke them in pieces, right? He, when God wrote the commandments on those tablets of stone and Moses got so angry at the people, he broke, he literally threw the, the stones down, broke them and he had to write them over again. And um, but we've all broken the commandments and it was really symbolic. That the very one who's being given and the, the commandments are being transferred to Moses or being given to Moses to give to the people. He ends up breaking them, literally physically breaking the stones that God wrote them on. And a picture of how every one of us breaks all breaks the commandments in one way or another. And that's why we're cursed without Christ. But that's why Galatians 3.13 says Christ redeemed us from the curse so that we could have the blessings that Christ redeemed us from the curse. Now we can experience the blessing in order that the that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham would come upon those who receive the promise of the spirit. You're redeemed. You're already redeemed. You're already the curse is already broken. You're redeemed from it. You can't obey enough of Moses's laws to be saved there. You've already we've all failed already. One of them, if you hate your brother, you've you, you've committed murder. The Bible says if you if you look at a woman to lust for her, you've committed adultery. We're all guilty. We're all guilty in our natural, physical and, and emotional self. But Jesus. His blood his sacrifice on the cross makes us not guilty, washes our sin away and redeems us from the curse, delivers us, rescues us, ransoms us from being under the power of Satan and under the power of the law and under the power of the commandments and under the power of failure. And now we've been given the gift of righteousness. We've been given victory. We've been seated with Christ in heavenly places. Now we're of a new bloodline. I want you to mark this moment in your life, this holy week. Number one, the curse is already broken, so you no one can break it for you. You can't pay anybody. You can't pay a preacher or a, 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 a magician or a fortune teller or any of these people that are in occultic things. They don't have the secret to your freedom. They don't have the key to to your redemption. Only Jesus holds that and he he's given it to you as a free gift. Now you have new blood running through your veins. You are of a new bloodline. You were of your parents and of their parents and ultimately of Adam and Eve. But Jesus interrupted the old bloodline of Adam and Eve's failure and Jesus created a new bloodline. Now we have Jesus royal blood running through our veins. Many of you know the verse in Second Corinthians, chapter five, verse 17 says that uh, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away and all things have become new. If any man's in Christ, he's a new creature. You're a new one. Translation says we're new. We're a new species of being. You say, why is that so important? I'm just trying to pay my bills. I'm just trying to get along with my family. I'm just trying to make it through another day. I'm just trying to be safe in an unsafe world. That's my whole point. What this matters is, is this gives you access to all of the blessings uh, that God has promised from Genesis to Revelation. You have access to every blessing that's in this book. And you have been redeemed from every curse that's in this book. You are now a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Romans chapter eight tells us we're a joint heir with him, that whatever Jesus is, we are. The Bible says it is only in Christ we find out who we are and what we're living for. Now you are his family. Boy, I wish you could get a hold of that. What made you 
the family that you're in physically, what made you the family that you were born in was their blood, their seed, their womb. You became a part of that family because you were born from their blood and their seed into that family. Well, when the Bible says when we accept Jesus Christ, we're born again. And John, chapter three, verse three says, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God or enter the kingdom of God. Everyone must be born again. And so when you're born again, what is actually happening is you're being born into a new family, which family you're being born into the family of God, you're into the family of Jesus Christ. His blessing is your inheritance now. Now you get all the blessings that Jesus has the right to and he gives them to you. That's why we need to adopt a covenant mindset in our lives. So many of us have a, a mindset of defeat. You know, your greatest asset is your mindset, right? Your greatest asset is not the money you have. It's not the stocks you have. It's not the possessions you have. The greatest asset you have is your mindset. In other words, if you will adopt this covenant mindset, what does that mean? A covenant mindset? It means that because I'll get into this in our next podcast more in detail. OK, we'll double click on this. But a covenant mindset means a covenant has been made when two people get married. It's called a marriage covenant. But when you become a believer in Jesus Christ, that is a, a blood covenant that through Jesus blood being shed. Now, everything that he is. You are everything that he has is now yours. You know, when you get married, if it's a all in kind of all in marriage, it means everything that that person owns, you now own everything that you they have, you have. It's a covenant. It's a, a co ownership and partnership. That's what a covenant is. And a covenant with God through the blood of Jesus is called a blood covenant, meaning God shed his blood to prove to you and to guarantee for you that he will keep his promise. It's a blood covenant. It's sealed in blood. It's not a signature with a pen. It's a signature with blood in the flesh, from the flesh of Jesus, from the body of Jesus. That blood is the signature guarantee to every blessing that is in the Bible belongs to you. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter nine, a will. Most people know that a will is like your last will and testament. What is a will when you before you die, you write a will so that when you die, you've already written down all of your possessions are going to go to a certain heir, whoever is going to have the inheritance. It might depending on how many possessions you have. It may be a long will. It might be a short will. But the point is, is whatever you leave for your family and loved ones when you die, it's only available when you die. The will does not go into effect while you're living. It only goes into effect when you die. So when Jesus died, that's when God's will, God's covenant, God's promises, God's inheritance officially became yours when Jesus died. All you have to do to receive those is to accept Jesus. And with him comes every blessing. Romans chapter eight says he who did not spare his own son, if he gave us Jesus, why would he withhold any gift? He who did not spare his own son, how will he withhold anything from you? In other words, he gave us his son to make a covenant with us. And it's in Jesus blood. God references Jesus blood. God thinks in blood terms. God blesses based on blood. When you accept Jesus into your life, you are now in the bloodline of Jesus Christ and you have the rights to God's promises and God's covenant blessings that are written about throughout Scripture. Both Old Testament and New Testament blessings are yours in Jesus Christ because you accept him and all the curses. You're redeemed from those. They may still 
some of the effects of those curses may still remain in your life. It's a it's a process of us freeing from the mindsets of those things, freeing ourselves from the expectation of something bad to happen, freeing ourselves from a poverty mindset, a sickness mindset, um, a defeated mindset. And we have to transform our minds, retrain our brains to understand a covenant mindset, a blessing mindset, a faith mindset, an expectation of good mindset. That's the new mindset that we have to adopt because Jesus already paid for us to have it all. We might as well as a man thinks, so is he. We might as well get our thinking in alignment with what Jesus already did for us. And when you get a hold of that, you will experience joy and peace unspeakable and full of glory. OK, this is what it means to be redeemed from the curse. No longer are you going down, 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 but you're going up, 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 up. And your path, because you are now in Christ Jesus, is going to get brighter and brighter and brighter until the full day. If you want to know more about being in Christ Jesus, if you want to know more about being a child of God, just go to our website at lifechangerschurch.com slash salvation, lifechangerschurch.com slash salvation. You'll find a free book that I have for you there that can help you in this journey. It's absolutely free. You can download it anywhere in the world um, or you can sign up for our fast from wrong thinking and you can start that today. It's evergreen thoughts that will change your life anytime you read them, every time you think of any time you process through these thoughts and dismantle the thoughts that defeat you and adopt a victory mindset. Things are just going to get better and better for you. Expect the blessings because Jesus paid for them in his own blood. The greatest one of all, the greatest blessing of all is having a relationship with God. If you want to know more about one, reach me on lifechangerschurch.com slash salvation. Come on out to our Good Friday service. If you're in the Chicago area, thanks for giving. If you want to pay it forward, help us get this message out to other people. You can go to lifechangerschurch.com slash give. I know I've given you a lot of uh, websites to go to here and URLs to go to here, but lifechangerschurch.com slash give. If you'd like to give, plant your seed, set yourself up for a greater harvest by planting good seed. Help others hear this message, help others get this life changing truth, help others become champions and be a part of our champion community, our community of champions. Until next time, keep fasting from wrong thinking, keep thinking like a champion, keep believing that you've been redeemed from the curse of going down, 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 down. And you are expecting and you can expect the blessings of you going up, 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 up and one day away into heaven forever. God bless. See you in our next podcast.